In this video we're going to learn how to create this advertising design step by step from scratch. So without wasting any more time, let's dig into business. Okay guys, I want to tell you the main idea and the concept. It's basically creating a bottle in the shape of an apple juice. This juice is purely consists of apple and it's natural. That's why I put it into this nature scene and that's it. Wait a minute. Did we just hit 100k subscribers? Damn! That, that's insane guys. It took me two years in my first YouTube channel to get to this point. I guess you own me something for this. Yeah, I want to thank you so much guys for your support. That was really insane. And because of that, I have two gifts for you. The first is this full length tutorial. And the second is 50% discount for my premium course, the ultimate guide for photo manipulation. You will find the coupon code in the description. Again, thank you so much guys for your support. I really appreciate it. And yeah, let's start the video. So I will start as usual with this sky. I liked how it looks, the sunset. Let's put the sky here, squeeze it like this. Firstly, let's enhance its colors because there are a lot of reds and magenta. We need to get rid of these colors. I will do this by simply creating selective color and let's clip it to this layer and let's start to shift the, uh, let's start with the magentas and start to shift them towards cyan and at the same time in the magentas let's remove the magenta decreasing the magenta increase the greens and let's add some yellows let's go to the blues and let's add some reds i, I want to reduce the intensity of the blue magenta color okay that's why i'm trying to manipulate colors so that i get rid of this magenta bluish tint i guess the reds are very saturated so let's go to the reds and Let's reduce them by increasing the cyans. Basically, if I want to reduce some color, I'm adding the opposite color in the color wheel, okay? And if you don't know what is the, the opposite of each color, you can find it simply by creating a color balance. You can see that uh, here, the red is the opposite of cyan. So if I have a lot of red in uh, my image, and I want to reduce it, I simply add some cyans that will reduce the red. Next, I think we can desaturate or um, reduce the contrast of the sky a little bit because I want it to be like a uh, bright with little contrast. Okay, so let's create brightness contrast adjustment layer and let's reduce the contrast because I, I don't want it to took the eye from the scene. Very nice, now our sky is ready. So let's get the next element, which will be these mountains, okay? So let's just squeeze it like this, and maybe we can stretch it like this. Very nice, press enter, and I will select its sky by simply going to select and select sky. Very good, and let's press alt and press into the mask. I guess we are good to go, but maybe we can add some blues to the shadows because as you can see here, the shadows has some cyanish blue tint. So let's try to add it using color balance. So I'll, go, I'll go to adjustment, creating color balance, and let's go to the shadows and add some maybe cyans, add some green, cyans, some blues. Let's see before after before after now we need the sun obviously so let's get this image the lens flare of the sun let's flip it horizontally and let's put it right here very good it's turn it's blending mode into screen and wow everything is matched properly and let's fade the edges creating a mask and with the soft rounded brush i can simply fade these edges the next we will bring the main focal point which will be the apple let's take a quick break to hear from the sponsor of this video skillshare the leading online learning community that will ignite your passion and unlock your potential with the skillshare you will gain access to a vast library of thousands of courses taught by industry experts in diverse fields such as photography graphic design business marketing cooking music and much more for example if you are into photo manipulation 
manipulation and digital art, then you should have some knowledge about digital painting. And for this, you should definitely check out this amazing digital painting class from Jonas Duro. I really like his way of teaching and the results of his students are amazing. Another thing I like about Skillshare is the learning paths, which can gather different courses for you to start and proceed in a specific field. Like this one for growing your first YouTube channel, it has a sequence of courses that will help you achieve your goal. And Skillshare launches new premium classes each week that are ad-free with some titles for multiple languages. And the best part? Skillshare is always at your fingertips. Access all the courses anytime, anywhere, right from your smartphone. The first 500 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Ready to embark on your learning journey? Visit Skillshare.com now and start exploring their courses today. The next we will bring the main focal point which will be the apple. So for this I will get this empty bottle because I want to take its shape and use it to create our main focal point, okay? So I will simply start to select it using the select subject tool and simply I will uh, create a new layer and fill it pressing alt backspace with any color. Okay, so I'm just using it as a reference for the shape of the bottle. For now, let's just hide these to focus on this image itself uh, because we need to put some details on it okay so let's start by bringing this image of the apple to create the shape of the bottle i will just select these apples using the select subject tool and then let's make it smaller and let's try to match its shape and put it into the shape of the bottle so i'm going to use this image only of the apples to create the whole shape of the bottle. Okay, so let's start uh, trying to match the shape. I will just try to duplicate this layer by pressing Alt and taking a copy. I want it not to look like it's complete duplicate. Okay, maybe you can flip it horizontally to see. Let's take another copy and put it right here. I'm basically trying to match the shape of the bottle. That's it. We can take all these and duplicate them by pressing Alt and dragging them like this. Very nice, let's see. Okay, that's very nice. Let's bring all these layers into one group. So I will just put them into a group. Very nice. Now let's bring some other elements to add some color into these apples. So I will just bring this image of the apples and I will simply select these leaves by the object selection tool. And let's press Ctrl J and let's bring them into our main project. Put them here, put them into the group of the apples and let's try to put uh, them into different placement into the uh, between the apples that's good enough now let's bring this image and let's select this cap of the bottle by the object selection tool let's press ctrl t let's try to stretch it like this so now let's try to put the apples into a good placement something like this maybe yeah. That sounds perfect. Let's just mask this part and we are good to go. I'll use the mask to mask this part and then this part. Very, very nice. Now let's bring our images back and try to blend this into the scene. The first step I'm going to make is to bring this label the apple juice that is very very nice obviously the bottle is now ready but it is not blended at all so how can we blend it into the scene we will start by blending the lightness next we will blend the saturation and color and secondly we will blend the shadows and the highlights okay so let's start by blending this intersection we want some grass from this to be above 
the uh, apple bottle itself. So how can we do this? I'll do this by simply taking a copy from this and putting it above the apples by pressing Ctrl J, press Ctrl E, and then bringing it above the apple and then create a mask and press Ctrl I to invert the mask. And then I will use a grass brush to paint some grass above the apple. That's it. But I want to make sure that I am following the flow of the grass of the original image. So here, this grass have this direction and the flow, and we have uh, others in this direction and all this stuff. So let's bring the grass brush and let's paint with the same direction. If I want to rotate it, I will use the arrows to the right or to the left. If I want bigger moves, I will press shift and right or shift and left. And if I want to flip the brush itself, I'll go from the brush settings and I'll press this flip to the X or the Y. Okay, so let's start painting. I'll use this brush. It's called the grass brush. You can find it anywhere online, I guess. Just type grass brush. Or you can find it in my premium course. <laughs> Cheap marketing. <laughs> okay, let's just flip it to the opposite direction. And let's paint over here. That's very nice. The next step, we are going to blend the lightness. And this is crucial because if we are creating some artistic photo manipulation, we can make any element as dark as we want. But in these commercials, the hero is the juice or the bottle of the juice. So we don't want to make it very dark, even if it's not realistic. Okay, we will darken it to the limit that it is a little bit realistic, but at the same time, it pops to your eye. We want to make it a little bit dark to match the scene. That's it. We don't want to exaggerate into the effect. Okay, that's the first step. Secondly, we want to match the color. So for this, I will just give it a touch of um, let's see, maybe add, let's create a cl clipping mask and use the color balance to add maybe some reds. Use your eye to analyze if it's blended or not. Maybe some touch of magenta. And let's see if we add blue or yellow. I guess we should add some touch of yellow as well. Before and after, very subtle change. Let's go to the shadows and see we, what we can do. Yeah, obviously we need to add some cyans to reduce the reds from the shadows because the shadows here has cyans and magentas and maybe blue. So let's add a little touch of magenta and another touch of blue. Don't uh, exaggerate into these effects. Or after, that's not bad at all. Let's go to the highlights and see. Maybe we can add some reds. I don't know. Some reds, some greens, and some yellows to the highlights because the, the highlights here is orangey. So yeah, let's see before, after. Let's zoom in a little bit. Before and after. Before that. Now we need to paint some shadows into the apples itself to give it realism, okay? So I'll do this by simply creating a new layer and let's put it above everything and using the soft rounded brush and low flow of this brush, let's pick average color from the apple and let's change the blending mode of this layer into multiply, I can paint the shadow like this. And why did I do so is that because I want the shadows to have some color. I don't want it to look like it's absolute black. The multiply blending mode is simply uh, darkening the same color that I am 
um, using and making it look like it's shadow. That's a simple explanation. So let's try to paint the shadows. I will paint the shadow between the contact of each two apples. So for example, this part should have some shadow because it's kind of touching uh, uh, another apple here. So here also we have some shadow. And here also we have so we should have some shadows. Okay, so I'm trying to analyze it with you right now. So uh, can you see this intersection between these two apples? So we have this apple and we have this one. And the contact between them should have something called occlusion shadow. And it, it should be faded like this. So let's go to the main layer and let's try to pick the color. Let's try to paint the shadow. I will start by um, painting some sh a little bit sharp shadows like this using the sharp uh, rounded, solid rounded brush. And then I can fade it if I want using the soft rounded brush, of course. So, yeah, try to be subtle and we can also reduce its opacity later. Maybe I can, I will uh, speed up the process of this part and get back to you, but you got the point. Here in the context of the apples with the grass, we can pick some green color from the grass and paint some subtle shadow touches like this. Very nice. Here is the final result after painting the shadows. As you can see, it gives it depth and it's now more cohesive. Okay. Obviously, we will not leave these uh, extra parts as they are. So, how can we remove them? Is simply by pressing Ctrl and pressing into the layer of the label. Press Alt and press into the mask to create a mask to remove it from this. Parts, and at the same time we will remove it from the cab part as well so that's that's for the local shadows between the apples themselves but we want a global shadow of the whole bottle that is resulting from the sun itself so we can do this by simply creating a new layer clip it to the uh, group and let's bring some maybe this color some magenta or some color from the shadows you know because we have bright oranges in the highlights and we have at the same time uh, blues magenta dark colors into the shadows so that split tuning is giving us contrast uh, when you look at it so let's change the blending mode of this layer into multiply and let's try to give it a shadow. Let's just give it a touch like this. It's like a global shadow for the uh, uh, apple uh, bottle. Maybe we can get some green tint from these parts and give it a touch at the bottom. Something like this. Let's see, this is too much actually. So we need to remove the um, shadows from the highlight parts because it lost the form and the three dimensionality. So how can we do this is by simply double click into the layer and removing it from the blend F slider. So we will remo remove the shadows from the uh, absolute highlights like this and we can press alt to split the cursor and soften the intersection something like this i think yeah press ok and see it's not bad maybe we can reduce the opacity here is before here is after it's too much we can remove uh, reduce it uh, again so it's before and after, subtle, but looks good, actually. Very nice. 
Now let's create global shadow into this grass because obviously the light is coming from here and the shadows should be some, somewhere here, something like this, okay? So let's try to do this by simply creating a new layer, but at this time it will be above the grass layer. So we will analyze the image. So the sun is, uh, the light is coming from here. So the shadow should be something maybe like this. And here as well. So it's, I'm just trying to analyze it by my eye and see how can we paint the shadows. Of course, we don't need this. Okay, so let's change the blending mode of the layer into multiply and let's paint some shadows. Let's paint them like this. Subtle and soft. Let's see. Of course, this is too much. So let's just erase it with the eraser. Something like this. And we can also uh, soften the edges using maybe Gaussian Blur. So let's go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. We can blur it a little bit. Something like this. And at the same time, we can remove the shadows, some uh, shadows from the highlights. So I will just remove it from the highlights like this to give it a texture, you know? Something like this. Maybe we can erase some parts. So tweak it until you are satisfied. I'm not 100% satisfied with it yet. So I will try to take some time to get it uh, right or to get the best result. Okay, take your time and until you get the best results, but for me that's not bad for now. So the next thing, uh, the shadows are now pretty good, but we want to paint the highlights. So for the highlights, I will just paint it using hue saturation. So let's create hue saturation adjustment layer and press colorize, create a clipping mask of course, and let's give it some orangey color, increase the um, saturation and the brightness. Maybe some color like this and then double click into the layer and remove these highlights from the shadows, from the absolute shadows, like this. This will give it some texture, you know? So I guess this is good. So then press OK, so press Ctrl I to invert the mask and maybe we can get any texture brush. So yeah, let's try to paint the highlights using this brush. So of course we will not be 100% ultra realistic, but we, I'm asking you to try it, okay? So for example, I cannot paint light here because this is a shadow area. Uh, light should not be in this area. Okay, so let's just try to uh, make our best to paint the most realistic highlights and I think it should work. Okay, so sometimes you need to zoom in and zoom out to see if you're uh, in the right direction or not. Using the brush, I'm just painting some highlights and then erasing some edges to blend it in a good way. And let's try to give it some global soft lights, creating a new layer and with screen blending mode and uh, with the soft rounded brush, I can pick the light color and give it one touch something like this 
and let's remove it from the absolute shadows and remove it from the absolute shadows like this that's nice maybe we can reduce uh, lower the opacity of this one and let's see here is before and here is after before and after i think that is good maybe we can remove uh, or reduce the opacity of the shadows it's very dark and maybe these shadows as well are very dark so let's reduce the opacity all right that's good for now next we will bring this image overlay and put it behind the bottle because i want it to be a separating layer between the the bottle and the background so some sort of hazing effect to bring the focus into the product itself let's change its color by pressing ctrl u and press colorize let's give it some orangey color saturate it and remove some brightness from it and then we can create a mask and soften the edges using soft rounded brush so this is basically uh, something functional to separate the product from the surrounding something like this the next element will be this tree i will put it into the sides to the left and to the right be because i want it to centralize the frame or the composition select it using maybe color range let's choose this white and then press ok and then let's create a mask press ctrl i to invert the mask and right click convert it into a smart object and let's bring it into our project and press ctrl t right click flip it horizontal and let's put it somewhere maybe here and now let's in a, try to blend it into our uh, composite so let's start by the lightness i guess the, you got the point so let's go to curves and let's make it dark create a clipping mask and let's make it dark like this and at the same time we need to shift its colors so i will simply shift it from the curves because i don't want uh, to have a lot of colors and it, this is some simple color shifting so i will do it using curves so here is before and here is after one layer does it all Let's just try to remove this part using the grass brush. Just remove some parts from here. And then we can create a new layer and change its blending mode into multiply, put it into the tree group. And using maybe the soft rounded brush, I will just pick color from here and draw some shadow. Maybe we can just decrease its opacity. So let's bring another copy of this tree to the other direction. So I'll just press Alt and duplicate it and put it right here. I guess we need to remove these reflections and we can remove it by simply creating a new layer and start to paint over these parts. I guess this is better before after before and after this is better okay very nice next let's bring our cool elements let's start with this scroll using the object selection tool so let's just select press into select subject press into the mask and then we can refine the edges using select and mask from here from the properties so let's just paint over the his fur and just let's make it smaller and let's bring this tree part and let's select it using color range as well let's create a mask press ctrl i to invert it okay let's make it small and let's put it right here so i will just try to make all these things fast 
and I think you can uh, follow along with me because I'm not doing something new okay everything I'm doing now is maybe the same as the previous thing That's very nice. Now let's paint some highlights. I will do this by creating solid color and choose some reddish orangey color, change its blending mode into screen, create a clipping mask, press Ctrl I to invert this mask and using the grass brush I'll be painting uh, some highlights in a form of four. can bring another element which will be this rabbit so the same process again One final thing, we can bring one of these layers of the leaves and give it some maybe um, path blur, something like this. And maybe we can reduce the, the speed and then press OK. Yeah. Okay, everything is good. So let's go to color grading. I will start everything by creating a group and name it grading. And let's start by trying to unify everything. I'll do this by creating a selective color adjustment layer. And let's go to the whites and try to give it the look that I want. Let's try to give the highlights some cyans i like this cyan effect in these parts maybe some greens and some yellows or blues i think yellows yeah it's very nice let's make it darker something like this so let's see before after or after this is for the highlights so let's go to the shadows i guess i need to leave it somehow neutral but shifted to the reds so let's just give it a touch for red And yeah, after some tweaks, here is the final result. Here is before blending and here is after. All right, guys, this is a never ending process. I can go for hours tweaking colors and everything. But for now, this is enough. I hope you benefited and most importantly, have fun doing some sort of advertising designs like this. Of course, if you want to increase your skills and photo manipulation, you need to do maybe the same idea but with your touch to it uh, maybe you can change the pictures you are using or something and as mentioned my premium course the ultimate guide to photo manipulation has now a 50 percent discount don't miss the chance it will not last forever and yeah let me know guys in the comments what do you think about these kind of episodes do you like it or not yeah see you soon in next classes peace